It's a pleasure for me to introduce you to, to Hannah Carey, and I'm never sure if I say your last name correctly. Can you say <laughs> it for me? Yes, Carrie, that's perfect. Right. Okay, okay, fantastic. Uh, Hannah is, uh, she recently joined Consensus International. We are so blessed to have her in the Consensus family and our customers are so lucky to have her too. She has, uh, she's very young, as you can see, but she already <laughs> has four years of experience with SAP Business One. She actually fell in love with the system through a program that we have, that SAP has with the St. Vincent's College. That that's correct, Hannah? Mm -hmm, correct. Yes. From here, kudos to that program uh, and to Robert Mackley. It's a fantastic program. And Hannah was headed to finance, uh, investing, and, and, and things of the sorts, but she joined this program and uh, traveling was one of the things that caught her attention and 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 that brought her to to the life of a consultant uh, but she also it's a natural she loves helping customers you as you know uh, I lead customer experience at consensus and Hannah is one of those consultants that makes my life so easy because she delivers a fantastic experience and if you've worked with Hannah before I'm sure you know that uh, and yes, she's traveling today, as she mentioned, she's in Texas, she's visiting uh, one of our customers there, and uh, she's traveling, helping customers, and uh, I asked her to prepare this webinar for us, uh, highlighting her favorite reports, and the reports that she enjoys the most when she's sharing these reports with customers. I see a lot of new faces uh, today joining us to this webinar, so new users, uh, users who are going to uh, deploy SAP Business One soon or have recently gone live with, with, uh, with the system. But I also see all friends joining us. I'm super glad that you're all here. I think this content is useful for anybody because even though these, these reports are out of the box, some of us, we get used to working in SAP in different ways and we just oversee these reports and they are very, very useful. My personal favorite, Hannah, I need to tell you is the open item list. I don't know if you have one favorite. I know I asked you to choose five, but maybe you have one of them is your favorite or not. I think you're spot on. The open items list we'll see in a few moments is very versatile. I think many people can find value from it. So it's it's a go-to. Yeah, yeah. For me, it's great because it's you can use it for so many documents and it's going to give you like an immediate view of what you have pending, right? So if you have... Mm -hmm open deliveries why you know you want to see those open documents because probably there's something there's an action that you need to take there so it's very very useful so thank you hannah thank you again for preparing this content and for being with us today uh, i'm gonna just uh some reminders before we start the session and this is just a sentence that i like to read out loud and take the time uh, because it's important for me that you guys know that a good day for any of us here at Consensus is when we can make a change, no matter if it's big or small, in, in one of your work's life for the better, in any SAP Business One user's work life for the better. We, we love it when we can show you a shortcut or, you know, we can help you with a problem. And we were talking with Hannah before and she was telling me she loves troubleshooting. That's what we're here for. We're here to help you. And it really makes our day when you give us that opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, in order to help you uh, with it not being support, we produce content like this webinar, but also we produce how-to guides or articles that we think are going to be useful for you. You can choose to link with us in your favorite social media. You're going to, where you're going to find the type of content that you're going to find in social media is content that we think it's going to be useful for you. Tips and tricks. It might be short videos or like I was mentioning, maybe guides or PDFs, but you can choose the one that you like the most, the social platform where you spend more time or where you would like to see content from us and just follow us there and, and you will get access to all that content, which is also in our website and you will find all the content that we produce from customer experience with the help of you know of smart consultants like Hannah you will find it in consensusintl.com slash resources that's where all the all your resources for learning SAP Business One or even finding fixes to problems that you're experiencing are going to be there okay 
And last but not least, you guys are all muted by default uh, so that we can enjoy the content, but you can use the Q&A feature that Zoom provides at any time during the presentation, and we will try to get to your questions at the end, okay? And I think that's all from us. Hannah, uh, you and me, we're going to be uh, turning off our cameras so mm -hmm. that we can share your presentation, and I hope you enjoy, and I'll see you later at the questions, okay? Perfect. Thank you. The first report that I would like to cover today is the open items list. The purpose of this report is to return the documents that we specify in open status. This can give us really good insight into the sales and purchasing documents, where we are in the process, and perhaps we can even change the statuses of the documents in just a few moments. So let's go ahead and find the report in SAP. As you can see, it's accessible from, from several different modules. So this is really cool. So depending which area you're working in, it can be conveniently accessed. Let's go ahead and open it here. And now let's walk through a couple examples of why I think this report is very valuable, convenient, and one of my favorites. So taking a look at the sales orders here, we can see all the open sales orders in the system. If, for example, I'm analyzing this and I realize that we want to cancel this sales order, we can definitely do so by drilling in, right clicking and pressing cancel. However, instead of going to the document, we can highlight the row, right click and cancel directly from this report. In addition, we also have the option to put it in closed status. So let's do an example where we can change many different sales orders in bulk at one time to closed status. As you can see, it is now removing these sales orders because they're no longer in open status and they have now been closed. So this can allow us to save quite a bit of time uh, by selecting these checkboxes and doing many in bulk. So let's take uh, the AP invoices for another example. And let's go ahead and see what we have to pay our vendors. Again, a lot of data can be returned in this report. The longer you have your system, the more documents are added, or if you have a high transaction volume. So let's go ahead and use this filter option here to return a smaller subset of data that will be more useful to us. So let's say, for example, we want to return all AP invoices for Anthony Smith. And let's take a look at our higher invoices to prioritize. So we can use these filter options here. And again, you can see many different filters, but we'll do this example for now, just to showcase how we can specify and drill down into the data. So here we go. In addition here, we have our form settings. We will touch on this in a couple different reports, but the open items list has a lot of different fields right out of the box that you can use. So I do want to highlight this. For example, we could showcase the projects. We could also add payment terms for the invoices, uh, who they were created by, amongst other fields. So when we add those, they will be added over here on the end. So one of the last examples that I would like to go over is the production orders. So this report will have an additional built-in filter here on some documents. So the production orders is a great example. So we can go ahead and filter and find those that are in plan status. Again, we can select one and move it to a different status. Let's move this over to released. 
it has now been removed from planned. It will now appear in released here. And again, we can also do a bulk update, which is really valuable. It can save us a lot of time. Because as you know, if we want to change the status, we'll drill into the document and change it here. And we would have had to do that for all of those documents we just selected in just a few seconds. One additional great feature of this report is that it can be used for many different document types. As SAP released new versions, I have seen additional document types become available and I've recommended this report to users more and more. So this report at a quick glance might seem very simple, straightforward, and it is simple and straightforward to use. It's really great and user friendly. However, it really packs a punch. It gives us a lot of opportunity to bounce back and forth between different documents as needed and to filter the data as we desire. This report can add a lot of value for almost anyone in the system because of the wide variety of document types to choose from. In fact, it's one of the very first reports that I like to cover with clients during implementations because it can add value to a wide variety of users. The next report I would like to touch on is the AR Aging Report. This is one of my favorites because it is definitely asked for by clients when undergoing a new implementation. Because they already use something similar, it is really great news that SAP has a ready to use report right out of the box. So let's go ahead and find it under the financials module. Financial reports, accounting, aging. So we'll go ahead and run through an example of this report and showcase some of the great features about it. So let's group this by customer. And let's go ahead and run this open for all customers in the system. However, if we wanted to specify one customer, we could. So again, it's very flexible. Or we could even run for a specific range. Or even better, we could specify a customer group and save us keying in the specific customers and find all those that are part of the group. I also really like how you can filter it even further if you have the property set up for your business partner. So if you're wondering where that resides, you can go to the BP master. And over on this properties tab, we have a few defined in my demo database. And depending on if they're checked or not, you can filter for those specific business partners even further. For now, we'll stick with the customer group level uh, for this example. Let's set our aging date to today. As you can see, these days, the 30, 60, 90, 120 is pretty standard. So we will use this for our example. And let's go ahead and look at all our documents from the first of the year to now and the aging status of them. Let's see here. Let's run for all customer groups to return as much information as possible. There we go. So at a quick glance, we can see the status of the air invoices that our customers will be paying us. So let's go ahead into the form settings. And to give, it, give us even further insight, we can click on these date ranges. And it will show us the time frame that the invoice is due. So for example, these are between zero to 30 days past due. And it's great news that we don't see anything out here into the further range. So it gives us a really great overview into the status of our receivables, as well as the relationships that we have with our customers. One of my favorite features with this report is being able to collapse and expand it. Sometimes I would really just like a summary. And other times I would like to expand 
and drill down a bit further and see the documents that attribute to the summary. So we can go directly to this AIR invoice and analyze it further if desired. Lastly, my favorite thing about this report is that it can be printed in or emailed to the clients that you see here. So for example, if you would like to email it, we can do so. If you are set up to email uh, with attachments from your attachments folder. So if you have any questions about that, please feel free to reach out to us and we can help you out. We also have, for the printing and emailing, a few different out-of-the-box reports ready to go. We do have more of a summary report. Uh, we have more of a detailed breakdown as well. And we have a customer statement report that will give an overall view of the customer status. And this feature is really nice here, the one page per customer. So you could actually go ahead and print out the AR aging report for all of these customers and each one will get a new page. We can assist with tailoring the crystal reports further, but again, the great part about this report is it's ready to go right out of the box and it's something that a lot of clients ask for right away. After covering the AR aging report, I now want to take a look at the AP aging. We will quickly go over this because as you can see, the selection criteria is very similar from one to another. So the great news is that once you become comfortable with the AR aging, you will likely know how to run the AP aging as well. Let's go ahead and find this. Again, under financials, financial reports, accounting, aging, AP aging. So in just one moment, we will see the value that this report adds. It'll return a list of the open payables to vendors. We can break it down by intervals as desired. And overall, it can help us prioritize which payables need to be paid depending on the dates that we specify. So let's go ahead and run it wide open for all vendors so we can return a good amount of data for our test. And instead of breaking it down by the day intervals, we can also break it down by months. So let's take a look at that. And let's run it. So you can see here, we don't have too much data in my demo database, but we do return this vendor's information here. And you can see the monthly breakdown. And if we want to verify that, we can always press the expand all button, or we can manually click this arrow here to expand certain vendors. So here is the AP invoice that the report is referring to. Something else to note with the AR and the AP aging is that you can send batch reports out to the customers and or vendors. So by selecting right here, the row that you'd like to send, you can go to file, send, email. So my demo database is currently not set up with an attachments folder defined in the general settings. So if you have any questions about this, please feel free to reach out to the consensus team and we will be more than happy to assist. So again, this report adds a lot of value with the options to specify the different intervals, search for the different dates as desired. We could also run it by due date. And there's also additional settings down here. We could display vendors with zero balance. We could break it down into different pages. So there's a lot of flexibility. And again, 
it's very similar in format to the AR aging, so it is very convenient to learn how to work with this one as well. The next report that I would like to take a look at is the general ledger report. This report is very powerful, and you will see shortly that it is very highly customizable. So let's go ahead and find it again in the financials module, financial reports, accounting, general ledger. So the purpose of this report is to provide a list of journal entries that correspond with the selection criteria that we will take the time to select here in just a moment. This report is commonly used by those in the finance department. So whether you're a controller, a CFO, C CPA, uh, you can find a lot of value in this. So we'll go ahead and walk through a couple of examples here to showcase that. So right off the bat, you can run this report by business partner or accounts. Let's start with business partner. And we're going to return data for those in the customer group construction. And let's look for journal entries with a posting date within the first to the end of 2023. And let's go ahead and run it. So again, we do have form settings to specify additional information we would like to see regarding the journal entries, and we can drill down further. Using the golden arrows, we can access the document, we can access the GL account that is affected, we can access the vendor. There's a lot of different options in this account that are referenced with golden arrows that make it very easy to quickly navigate areas of the system. So here we are, we can see this journal entry. So let's go back and touch on some of the additional settings that we can use. So this is where it is highly customizable. We do have a very large section of additional checkboxes. So for example, not only using journal entries in this report, we could return journal vouchers and we could showcase the foreign names of business partners. So there's some additional settings here to play around with and see what works well for your business. In addition, there's this other section down here sort and summarize. So when you check this box, it will open up this table here where you can then specify if you want to see totals only, if you want to see postings only, here we go at the journal entries, or if we would like to see postings and totals. So this section alone can show the report in very different ways. And even further, we can then sort the report in a certain order. So let's get rid of the vendor groups here. Actually, let's do all vendors and get rid of our customers here. And you can see that the posting dates are in order here because of the sort field that we used. So again, this is kind of hidden down here. So I hope this can add value uh, and feel free to test this out and let us know if you have any questions. Again, there's different display options. Um, you can show those not fully reconciled, only those that are fully reconciled. So if you don't want to run by business partner, you can also run by accounts here. So as you can see, the level one accounts are the drawers in our chart of accounts. So if we pull this up, you can see here our level one accounts. If we want to see all assets, we can go ahead 
and see all journal entries that occurred in the assets drawer within our date range here. Perhaps we want to drill down a bit further and we can go to our level two accounts, which again, correspond to our chart of accounts here. Level three, So this report is very valuable in the way that it's organized and very easy to understand. It has a lot going on. However, it's, it's very intuitive. So by double clicking this, we can select all, but I want to check out the journal entries just for these three level three accounts. There we go. So we have our accounts that we selected. We have all journal entries that were posted within our posting date timeframe, and we can further analyze the financials. Again, before we move on, I do also want to show this expanded function here. So by clicking on that button, it opens up an entire different window that you can customize even further. So for example, we could click on all accounts here. Let's run it for everything and let's expand and let's return the journal entries that hit any account and were caused by an error invoice. And let's run this here. And you can see that only AR invoices are now returned. So just from this quick look at it, you can see that there are many different options that you can play around with and customize it for what works best for your business. So the last thing to note about this report that is very helpful is the selection criteria template. So as you can see, we ran it for a very specific scenario. And if we would like to save that, we can go ahead, control A, go into add mode. Let's go ahead and select the specific criteria that we're using to run the report. And now let's go ahead, type in a name. Oh, it looks like I already chose that one. So let's go ahead give it a name, press enter, and it's now added the selection criteria. So let's go back to this report. And you can see these settings are what we selected, but if we are to use the drop down here and choose the template we just set up, it will automatically pull in those settings that we just saved. So this can save us a lot of time. I see it used when reports are run every day and you don't want to spend the time to do that because of the frequency of running it. But I also see it used where a report might be only run once a month and these very detailed settings can be easy to forget. So this can allow you to run the report with the same exact settings guaranteed every single month. To conclude my favorite SAP out of the box reports, I want to discuss the inventory audit report. This can be found under the inventory module, inventory reports, inventory audit report. So the purpose of this report is to return an overview of the inventory movements in the system. And this is dependent on the selection criteria, such as warehouse, item group, item, posting date, et cetera, that we'll specify here in a moment. 
As the name of the report suggests, it's a really good audit of your items. It can help you understand where they've come from and where they've gone to and how that affects your cumulative quantity as well as the cumulative value of the items. So let's go ahead and run this report from the beginning of 2023 until the end here. And let's first do an example where we look for one specific item. So let's go ahead and choose this printer here. We're going to look for any transactions, any movements to any of these warehouses in this time frame. So let's run it here. And now, as you can see, there wasn't any valid data return. So that has me thinking, is this item one that has never been moved in the system or has it just not fallen between this time frame. So let's go ahead and expand this time frame here. And just like that, within a couple seconds, we've confirmed our question. We know that this item has been involved in inventory movements in the system here. In fact, many, it just didn't fall within the date range. So that question could have been difficult to answer, may have required a custom query, someone on your team spending time to do that, but it added value very quickly uh, from this report. So let's go ahead and run this wide open now for all items in the system, since we just did an example with one item. And let's run it. So as you can see, this nice summary, it shows you the item with the cumulative quantity currently in the system at this exact moment, as well as the cumulative value. The cumulative value is something that I'm often asked for from clients, and this is the report that will show this out of the box. So this is extremely, extremely valuable. We can go ahead and expand this here if we want to drill down and see the specific movements with items. So if we have this first item here, we can see that 14 were brought into the system. We can drill into the document here and see which document brought it in. That makes sense being the GRPO. We can also see when items are taken out of the system and we can drill in here and see that it was delivered to our customer. So again, that makes sense. And SAP quickly allows us to verify the inventory movements. So these golden arrows are extremely, extremely valuable. They save time. To answer that question again, uh, we would have had to do a lot more digging, going and searching the document manually, but these arrows save us a lot of time and they're in this report quite a bit. So moving on here, perhaps we want to specify the warehouse and let's go ahead here and let's collapse and let's only take a look at the New York warehouses. And there we go. We can also group the report by warehouses. So we can go ahead and see this item is returned, everything from warehouse one, and this item is returned with everything from warehouse one. Let's scroll down and see if we have an example here from warehouse four. And it doesn't look like we have any there. So let's try the LA warehouses. There we go. So at a quick glance, we can see that warehouse two and warehouse four were the only ones used with this time frame. Lastly, I want to summarize by accounts. So let's go ahead here. And it will summarize the GL accounts that are used in these movements. So let's go ahead here and take a look at this account. And we can see that it is the finished goods. So by taking a right click, looking at the journal entry, we can see 
that this is the inventory account that was affected on that inventory movement. More specifically, if there's a certain GL account that you're looking for, say, for example, you have more inventory accounts in your chart of accounts that have been hit um, when performing transactions, you can go ahead and specify them here. So this may look familiar uh, because it was a very similar format to the general ledger account. So if you become familiar with one of my favorite accounts, the GL ledger, you can also very easily use this here in the inventory audit. So if we wanted to perhaps break it down and we wanted to check these other inventory accounts, we could definitely do so. Let's go down to level four here. And we could specify which accounts we'd like to search for. But in the demo database here, there is no data return. But again, this can be very useful if your chart of accounts has more options than mine does here. So to wrap up our session, um, I just want to point out a couple tools that we talked about that can make these reports even more useful. The form settings, the filter icons, the preview icon, as well as the print and or the email. These can all enhance the reports, specify the data into more specific scenarios, or allow us to share the data with others. If you have any questions regarding these reports, please feel free to contact Consensus and we will be happy to help. And in addition, we would also love your feedback on your favorite SAP reports. Thank you so much, Hannah. That was a great presentation. I hope everyone enjoyed the presentation as much as I did. I'm still learning every day, SAP Business One. And uh, and I did catch a couple of things that I didn't know on, on your presentation. So thank you very much for that presentation. We do have some questions. Hannah, I don't know if you are ready to answer those questions. You are on mute right now, so we can't hear you. <laughs> yes, I am happy to. Let me go ahead and share my screen in my fantastic. demo database and I'm we gonna can answer stop those. Share. Okay, fantastic. I'm going to stop sharing so that you can share your screen. Wonderful. Okay, so one of the questions is, are form settings for open items universal when changed or on a per user, per user basis? Yes, yeah, so this is a great question. So form settings will be per user. So if we go ahead on the open items list, for example, we click on the form settings, you can customize this to what you personally would like to see, um, whereas your teammates could change this and be seeing something slightly different. Okay, so the answer is it's per user. And, uh, and we're going to mark this one as answered. Fantastic. Uh, <laughs> another one of our users is asking, can all of these reports be pulled into Excel to sort? Yes, another great question. So we can definitely export to Excel. We can do it uh, two ways, which I'll show in a moment. Um, regarding the sorting, so I know we covered the filter, so we can definitely accomplish this in SAP. Um, but in addition, you can double click on these column headers to sort the data. So for this example, we can see uh, the date is then filtered from the most recent to the oldest. So that's another feature in SAP to take note of. However, if we want to export to Excel to manipulate it further, we can definitely do that by clicking on this Excel icon and ensuring that we select uh, the type of file that we would like with an Excel workbook. The other option, that I know sometimes users do if they don't have Excel on the same server that SAP is, you can go ahead and right click this, copy the table, and then paste that into 
an Excel workbook that you have open. Okay. And you have to double click. Can you show again where, where you have to double click? Yes, great question. So basically we're going to select somewhere in this table and we're going to right click with our mouse and mm -hmm. then press copy table. Okay. And that is going to copy the whole table, correct? Exactly. It'll also okay. include uh, the headers. Yes. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. There's another question uh, saying, can you please show how to add an additional column to the open item list? Yes, definitely. So we can do this with our predefined options through the form settings. So we can see here this form settings icon is white. It is available. Um, if it were grayed out like these, it's not available for the form, but this is great. We can do it here. Let's click on it. And let's find a new column to add. And let's add description here. We'll press OK. And now by scrolling over, we see that new column. OK, great. OK, a new question. Can you move the order of the columns? That is a great question. Let's go ahead and test this out. And let's see if we want to move document number in front of doc series, and we can do so. So what I did was choose the field that you'd wish to move, left click on it, hold it in for a moment or two, and then drag and drop it where you would like. And of course, let's press OK to update that. And now we can see that the order is switched. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Hannah. We have many questions today. I don't know <laughs> if we're going to have time for all of them. You let us know, Hannah, because as we mentioned at the beginning, you're at a customer side and we are we we are glad that we have you for this little while. But uh, you, mm -hmm. you let us know if if any of these questions we need to address then later. OK, and directly. Okay. Gisela, I see your question, but I don't really understand uh the question so maybe if you can write it again because i don't know what you mean by that okay so if you can rephrase it in a different way i think we'll be glad to reach out to you later if you want okay uh so pamela has a question in gl reports can you filter incoming payments by customer incoming payments by customer so um regarding the gl report so are we referring to which of the ones that we reviewed today? The GL. The general ledger. General report? ledger, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's look at those expanded options that we looked at over on the far right. Um, I'm not completely sure, but we'll definitely get the answer for you so we can take a look here. Fantastic. And it looks like, yes, uh, we can go ahead and incoming payment is a document type that we can filter for. Okay. So we can select that here. And then regarding the customers, uh, you can select a specific business partner or again, filter for a customer group like we did in the demo. Great. Hannah, thank you so much. And Joe, hi Joe, is asking, uh, is what was shown Hannah or SQL? It is Hannah. Mm -hmm. Both the name of our consultant is Hannah and, <laughs> and what we're showing is Hannah. Uh, does it make a difference? I don't believe it makes a difference in these reports, uh, Joe. I think these reports are available as well in SQL. Do you know for sure, Hannah? I believe you're correct, but let's double check to make sure. Yes, we'll double check and get back to you, but I believe these reports are available in, in, in both. Okay, so we have here Giselle, Gisela's question. How can we remove the default message that is in each email sent with customer's statements? Oh, okay. Okay, mm -hmm. yes, I understand your question, Gisela, but we're going to have to reach out to you anyway, because it's not, that's not in the report, but probably on the automation for the email to go out. Uh, we, we can check that later. I'll call you. Okay. Definitely. All right. Thank you so much, Hannah. I think that's all for, for today.
it was it was super interesting like i mentioned i i learned new things i hope you all learn new things uh today with hannah and myself uh don't forget to rate this session when we close the session you're going to be asked to to rate it and it really helps us improve any suggestions and uh, as you know we do webinars a little bit on demand so if you have something that you would really love to learn about sap business one and that you think a webinar could be uh the way please let us know send me an email or just include that note on the rating for this webinar uh, i hope everyone has a wonderful rest of the day thank you hannah and see you very soon thank you so much have a good bye. day everyone bye